For those who aren't aware, GeForce Now is NVIDIA's cloud gaming service, similar to Stadia, Luna, and xCloud. However, GeForce Now offers a tier that gives higher performance than any other service with the introduction of their premium 3080 tier. This gives you access to the new NVIDIA RTX 3080 graphics cards for your virtual rig you use when you are playing on GeForce Now. Don't be confused, this is not an actual rig you have to upkeep like you would your computer. This is just what's used to run the games you decide to play. Everything, including updates to games, drivers, etc., is still done behind the scenes like any other cloud gaming service. So before we get into the pros and cons of this service, here's a little bit of information regarding GeForce Now's new premium 3080 subscription. The new 3080 tier offers players the ability to game at 1440p and 120 FPS on a lot of their favorite games they have purchased on other platforms such as Steam, Epic, and Ubisoft Connect. Unlike Stadia, Luna, or xCloud, GeForce Now doesn't house the games you want to play and more or less functions as a middleman that connects you to these other game providers. Essentially, the same experience you would have on an actual PC without the downloads, installs, driver management, and so on. So instead of just selecting the game from the GeForce Now UI screen and that game loading up in GeForce Now, you will get a pop-up that directs you to where you purchased the game that verifies ownership, whether it's Steam, Epic, or Ubisoft Connect, before actually launching the game, whereas Stadia, Luna, and xCloud all do that on their own service, so that step isn't needed. This new premium tier costs $99 every six months, or $200 a year for simple math. The 3080 subscription tier is not cheap. However, it is still reasonably priced considering the cost of an RTX card right now. Honestly, even if you were able to find a 3080 card for MSRP, you would still have to pay for GeForce Now for about four to five years before you would even spend the same amount of money as you did buying the physical card. So even though $200 a year does sound pricey, if you look at it from a life cycle perspective, it really is a pretty good deal. Considering NVIDIA has had GeForce Now out for only a few years and have already given subscribers access to one of their top tier cards, it seems pretty probable that when the next line of cards release, we may get access to the 4080 shortly after physical release, which helps gamers get access to one of the latest and greatest graphics cards out. So first, let's start off with the pros. And clearly the biggest pro for this service is the ability to game in 1440p and 120 FPS. As someone who is new to gaming at anything above 60, I can tell you that 120 feels amazing. Since playing these games at this higher frame rate, it definitely has made it harder to go back down to 60 FPS. However, it is not near anywhere as jarring as the drop from 60 to 30 was. The 3080 card does give the ability to play higher than 120, but the stream itself is sent at 120, so you wouldn't be able to get any benefit from the game running at anything above 120. You can also play at 4K 60 FPS with HDR as well, but you will need to purchase a Nvidia Shield TV Pro in order to access that. Currently, only devices that can install the GeForce Now app, like computers and Android devices, can access the 1440p 120 FPS mode. Of course, they also need to have a 120 refresh rate as well. At this time, any device that can only access GeForce Now through the browser, like iPhones and iPads, cannot take advantage of the 1440p and 120 FPS, even if your device supports it like the new iPad Pros. Another huge pro is the game catalog you have access to when using GeForce Now. Right now, they support over a thousand games, which is far and away more than any other cloud gaming provider right now. Now, sometimes finding them can be a pain, more on that later, but this is still an amazing feat and gives players the ability to choose from a ton of great games. The visuals also fall under the pro category. Games look flat out amazing when playing at 1440p, since the power of the 3080 card allows you to run all settings at max and still get a solid 110 to 120 frame rate. Even though you may not be playing at an upscale 4K like on Stadia, since you are able to have all graphics on max settings, the game actually ends up looking better to me. Response time is also amazing on the 3080 tier for GeForce Now. My ping usually stays around 22-ish milliseconds, but you may notice it being higher here on these videos. For some reason, when I try to capture this footage while I play, it increases my ping. 
Couldn't tell you why, but I am using a very outdated Acer Nitro 5 laptop. So that may just be my laptop showing its age. Button input latency is virtually non-existent. NVIDIA has added in a lot of features like adaptive VSync in order to help lower latency a lot. I don't usually play with it because I never need it to, but it is there if you are having issues. Just to mention, I am hardwired when playing GeForce Now, but it's through a mesh connected Wi-Fi router. So if you are hardwired directly to your main router or modem, then you probably can get an even better performance than what I'm showing here. Okay, so now for the cons. First and foremost is the interface itself. Now, let me say this as coming from an individual who has been a console gamer his whole life, outside of now playing on cloud gaming services as well. So there is an expected ease of use when I sit down to play a game. This is not the case all the time with GeForce Now. For instance, you will need to make sure you connect all of your Steam, Epic Game Store, and Ubisoft Connect and EA Play accounts before you can launch a game because GeForce Now needs to be able to verify with those services that you actually own the game you're trying to play. If you don't, then it does launch you into that service so you can purchase the game from them, then you can launch it and play. So the setup to me is a bit much, but not crazy. Another area of the interface that is a pain is determining what games you can actually play sometimes. For instance, I wanted to play Rocket League and clearly it is listed on the GeForce Now interface as a free game that I can play. However, when I go to actually launch the game, it pops up a Steam page and tells me I can't play it. So it can definitely be a pain trying to find out what games are compatible at times. GeForce Now does offer a list of all compatible games and yes, Rocket League is still on there, but this is something that should be in the actual GeForce Now interface, not a link to click on a website as a reference. There is a no all games tab that you can see every game supported by GeForce Now. So you will need to use this list if you want to see any games available that doesn't fall into their categories they do show for games. Outside of the interface, there really has been no other issues for me. The service has definitely performed amazingly and I definitely will continue to play on here as one of my main gaming choices. And for my fellow console players that has never ventured into the PC world, don't be alarmed by all of the settings under the graphics section when it comes to setting how high the shadows are or how the textures are. All that stuff you can literally just put on highest. Like go to the top and just click highest. I know sometimes it might be a little jarring because we're not used to this stuff on console and other services like Stadia and Luna and xCloud don't give you the ability to set those parameters. But like I said, just throw them on high and you'll be good to go. I would recommend this to anyone looking to play at a higher frame rate while retaining great visuals, but not looking to spend a lot of money on a top shelf gaming rig. It gives you a good PC experience without the upfront cost of one. I hope that this video is helpful and if you have any questions on something I covered or maybe something I didn't, please leave them in the comments below and I will discuss them with you. Thanks as always for the support. Peace. Thank you.